Well, hey folks, it's John with Ozarks Back Roads with you. We're back in the World Headquarters garage today. We've got the mighty V-Strom, our uh, 2019 V-Strom 650 XT up on the lift. We're going to do a little maintenance on it. Uh, winter's blowing outside, so it's maintenance season now. Um, we're going to be pulling the rear swing arm off of this and the rear shock and, and uh, servicing the swing arm bearings and the drag link bearings there on the bottom of the shock. I haven't uh, ever done that on this bike. I think it's got around between 10 and 11,000 miles on it. So it's probably time to check and see if there's any grease in the bearings on the swing arm, drag link, the steering head, all that needs to be checked. But today we're gonna tackle the rear swing arm. Uh, it's kind of a bummer on this bike. Being how it's a V-twin, the rear exhaust comes off of the head and runs down through the swing arm, through the front of the swing arm. So in order to get the swing arm off, you have to remove the exhaust on this bike. And uh, honestly, I think it's uh, pulling the exhaust off and putting it back on is probably more work than actually pulling the swing arm and, uh, and servicing the bearings in it. But uh, it's gotta be done, so that's what we're gonna do. Stick around, we'll tear into this V-Strom and see if we can get this rear swing arm off. To get started with, I'm gonna have to get my skid plate off. Uh, on this bike, it attaches here up here on the, uh, on the cross bar between the, uh, the uh, crash bars and then back here on the frame. So I'll get that off. I'll pull this cover off here on the exhaust pipe and then I've got an O2 sensor that uh, is screwed into the exhaust and it runs up here under the seat and plugs in uh, plugs into the wiring harness under the seat so i'll remove this and then trace and find where this plugs in and remove unplug it under the seat so uh, i'll just leave the wire and the uh, sensor in the exhaust when i pull it off one thing I would like to note that's really important, you never want to unplug a sensor or plug a sensor back in with your battery hooked up. You want to be sure and unhook a battery cable off of your battery. I have my ground cable removed off of my battery. I did that first thing before I even started uh, tearing into the bike and that's a real good habit to get into. If, if the battery was hooked up and I plugged this up, there's a chance that I could damage the uh, computer the drivers that uh, that read this sensor. So uh, just be sure and unplug your battery and it, it could very well save yourself a whole lot of grief. My uh, muffler here is uh, clamped on. So I'll unclamp that and, and uh, unbolt it and slide it off. I went ahead and removed the, uh, the front pipe here off of the cylinder head and there's a clamp right here. I loosened it up and I was able to get this down and off. We've also got a slip joint on the downpipe back here on the back cylinder. The downpipe kind of comes down like this and there's a slip joint right about here, back up in here and it's behind the frame. I can't get the camera on it, but I've loosened that joint up and the pipe that runs out of this runs up into that. I'm gonna see if I can get this off slide this joint apart and leave, the, leave this little head pipe bolted up to the cylinder head back here and not have to, uh, to get in there and loosen that and then uh, change the gasket and all that. I'm just going to leave it tight and I'm going to see if I can get this pipe worked off of here. And I think I can. I think there's room. We'll just give it a little wiggle. Yep, it came off. And there it is. And the only thing I really had to unhook was uh, the hanger right here, which was part of my skid plate mount. So I already had that loose. And then I had to chase this wire up in here, this little plug plugged in right here to that. I unplugged it and fished it out. The, uh, the slip joints have a lead gasket in them. I don't know if you can see that lead gasket or not. Kind of shiny. So they'll, they'll reuse just fine. Those will be fine. You can clamp right back down on them and they'll be fine to reuse. Well, unfortunately on this bike, in order to get this drag link off, we've got the mounts for this center stand right here uh, are covering up our bolt to get this off. 
there's a bolt in here that has to come out and we've got this stuff in the way. So we're going to have to remove this. And the first thing I need to do is to get this, these pair of springs, these return springs for this uh, center stand. So I've got a uh, spring tool here that I've made, uh, just a piece of heavy wire, but you can buy a, uh, a spring pulling tool or you can make one. I'm going to hook it here on this uh, inner spring, the one that's on the inside, and see if I can get it pulled off of this pin right here. There it came. That wasn't too bad. Now we'll do the other one. Getting them off is pretty easy compared to getting them back on. We've got our uh, bolts loose here on this cover plate for this center stand. And I went ahead on the other side. I've got this off. It's the same plate, more or less. Three bolts. Pull this last bolt out right here. And this plate off. And the center stand will just drop right out of there. Now we can get to this bolt to remove this lower drag link. We'll just take these loose. Should be able to lift up a little bit and push these bolts out. There's one bone out. The other one. And then I'm going to stick a jack stand under, under this A-arm back here to hold it up. And I've got this attachment right here. So our link is loose now. We need to release it from the, uh, from the shock, the bottom of the shock right here. We've got our drag link off here, and uh, you'll notice that there's a sleeve through each one of these that the bolt runs through the center of. And this sleeve runs in a set of bearings on this one. There's bearings on either end. If we get right up here, you can see the little needle bearings in there. I got them on the other side as well. On this one, on the long one. And then this sleeve, that's what runs in the bearings. So first thing I want, I've done is made sure that everything is nice and smooth, that all of these, uh, these sleeves run no grabbiness or roughness. Everything feels real good right here on these sleeves. There's one in each one of these and uh, they all feel good. So I've taken them all out and uh, I've wiped out my bearings. I just took a, uh, a shop towel and stuck my little finger in there and just got everything out of these that I could. My sleeves that go through here. If you look at them, you can see where the bearings have run on these. There'll be a spot on them where the pressure is applied. And you can see it right there, right here and right here. But I can't feel anything. They're just smooth. There's no ridges or anything. So this is normal. This is what you're going to see. You shouldn't be able to see feel anything there. You don't want to feel that uh, the bearing is ground down in there or something. If you've got rust or if you see rust in here, you're probably going to have damage and need to change the bearings and get new sleeves. These feel real good. Uh, I can see where the bearings have ran on all of them. Right there you can see the shiny where the pressure is being applied but I can't feel anything and they roll real nice and smooth in the bearings. So that's what you want. You don't want to feel anything and you want them to, to roll nice and smooth in the bearings. So what we need to do now, since we've decided everything's cool here, we'll go ahead and pack these, uh, these bearings with fresh grease. And I'm just going to take some, uh, some high pressure, just basically 
uh, wheel bearing grease here. Um, it's a lithium based grease for wheel bearings, high pressure service. I'm just going to take this grease and just press it into those needles, down into those needles all the way around. And uh, just keep packing it in there and eventually it'll start squirting out the ends of the needles. When you press it down you'll see it squirt out the ends of the needles. So I'm going to keep doing this, working my way all the way around. But you want to press it down in there and really get it pressed in so that it, uh, it goes in around the needles to the back side. And as I'm pressing it in, I'm seeing the grease squirt out the ends of the, uh, of the bearing there around the ends of the needles. So I know that I'm packed. I've got all that's going to go in when it starts doing that. I'll go ahead and do the, uh, do the other bearings here. Now this long one has a bearing on either end. It's got a bearing on this end here and a bearing on this end here. Have to pack both ends of the bearings here and then these short ones just have the one bearing in the center. So I'll get all of these packed just like I did this one and then we'll grease these uh, sleeves up and put them back in place and then we'll have this drag link. It'll be serviced. It'll have grease in the bearings. We're over here on the right side of the bike. We're ready to pull our swing arm off and our uh, our swing arm uh, shaft that goes through the swing arm, the big long bolt, is behind this cover. This just pulls off. It just pushes in the hole. Not a whole lot of holding that on. But in here you'll see the end of the shaft. We've got a uh, an Allen bit will fit in the shaft right there. So it's also got a castle nut that j it's used as a jam nut here on the outside of this shaft that uh, it locks the shaft in place once it's torqued up. And I've got a uh, peg spanner, a peg socket that fits this. I'll put a link in the description below. I bought this off of uh, Amazon. It was about $20, I think. Wasn't real expensive and it fits a, a lot of the Suzuki's have this and this will fit a, a lot of different Suzuki's. The Suzuki's tend to use this uh, system on their swing arm uh, bolts. But those little pegs just fit in the uh, fit in the notches there in that uh, nut. We'll go ahead and see if we can break this loose. <clears throat> there it goes. So we'll get this nut off. It's just a nut that that has uh, slots in it for the spanner, the peg spanner, to fit into. Now on the other side. On the other end of this shaft is a nut, a big nut that you torque down to torque this up. So I need to hold this end of the shaft and then go around and loosen up the nut on the other side. Just take it off. I'm going to put my socket in here. This is just a bit, an Allen bit, a 19 Allen. Let the foot peg and the stand here hold my, my wrench and I'll go around there and loosen that up on the other side. All right, that was pretty tight. We got the nut off of the other side, the other end of the shaft here. So this bolt, this shaft does tighten up. When you install it, you tighten it, but it's only like 10 or, 10 or 12 foot pounds or 20 newton meters, not very much. So yeah, it comes right loose. So this will screw out now kind of wiggle the swing arm around as I screw this out. It makes it come out a little easier. There it is. So we can pull that shaft out and that will release the swing arm. Now the, the manual says to go ahead and remove the shock, the bolt in the top of it and take the shock out. The bolt in the top is just a rubber uh, grommet. There's no nothing to service up there, nothing to grease. We just pull it back. Yeah, that's no big deal. We'll take a look at these, uh, these sleeves and bearings on the ends of this. You can see there's one here. And it's just a sleeve that fits in there, kind of like those other sleeves we had earlier. It's got kind of a washer built in, built on the end of it there. So I'm going to feel of these and make sure they feel good. And I'm not feeling anything. They feel good. You can see where the 
the bearings have been running a little bit there on them, but they're not, uh, you can't feel anything. So that's normal. And those feel fine. If you look in here, you can see the bearing, needle bearings in here. Same as the, uh, the drag link, same kind of setup. There is a seal out here on the end of this. And the bearings are clean, there's no rust. There is some grease in them. So we got the same setup on the other side of the swing arm. Got another sleeve, another bearing. So basically we just, the same process as the drag link, we're gonna take a, roll those around and try to get all the grease and the old grease out of there that we can. I'm gonna give it a feel here and just kind of feel the, roll it around. I don't feel any uh, notchiness or anything, it's just smooth. So we do the same uh, procedure as we did on the drag link. We'll just take our grease and uh, just start pressing it down in those needles and working around, roll the bearing around and force the grease down in the needles so that it gets on the other side. And eventually it's gonna get to where the grease squirts out of the end of the needles. We're not quite there yet all the way around though. So now I'm, the grease that I'm pressing in is just squirting out the ends of the needles. There's no room for any more grease on the back side of the bearings. It's full. So I can't get any more grease in it. It won't hold anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and grease my sleeve. Now we'll roll this over to the other side. We'll wipe this bearing out and do the same procedure over here the link rods that run down to the drag link, the flat rods go here and here on either side of this. So there's a sleeve in here and there's a set of bearings on either end of this. So it's the same procedure. We're gonna inspect our sleeve, make sure there's nothing bad going on there and it looks good. So again, we've got the same thing, a set of needle bearings on either end of this with a seal on the outside. So we've got to take our little finger and get in there and try to get all the grease out that we can off of those needles. So we'll uh, just do the same procedure on these two bearings right here. Uh, pack them full of grease, put her sleeve back in, and then we'll be ready to reinstall our swing arm. Uh, one other thing to notice here, to note, is the, there's a chain uh, guard right here that wraps around the end of the swing arm. On, this is the left side of the swing arm right here. You can see this. It's a, it's a nylon piece, bolts on here. This keeps the chain off of the swing arm. It protects the swing arm so the chain can't get on it. Mine's getting a little worn. Uh, if I had thought about it, I would have ordered a new one. This is a good time to do it because you have to have the swing arm off to replace that. But uh, this one, this one's fine. It'll run another till the next service. And then I'll have to try to remember and order that. But uh, this is a good time to change this um, when you're servicing the bearings, if you can remember to order one. My needle bearings are all greased up. I got my sleeves back in the bearings. Everything's back in place. I pull my shock out, slip it behind it, kind of up into place there. It's time to uh, see if we can reinstall this uh, swing arm bolt. Before I install this, I'm going to take just a little bit of, of uh, that grease that we packed them bearings with, and I'm going to coat this shaft with the grease. And what the grease will do, it will prevent the galvanic corrosion, that white powdery corrosion that you get on your axle bolts. Anytime you have a, have a, a, steel, a steel bolt in aluminum, why you'll get that uh, powdery corrosion. This will help prevent that. I'm gonna put just a little bit of grease in these threads so this thing will torque up properly. 
So I should be able to lift that swing arm into position there. You can see in the hole when it's lined up, slide the shaft in. Kind of feeling there for any play. I don't feel any play at all in the swing arm. Can't twist it or back and forth here, side to side. Nice and smooth, so that ought to work good. We need about uh, 20 Newton meters on this, or which is basically 12 foot pounds, which is hardly anything. Um, that's gonna be plenty right there. I'm gonna go around the other side and put my nut on. So I'll set my uh, torque wrench to 74. Go around there and torque that nut down. Okay. 74, we got it. Now it's time to put our uh, castle nut back on here and jam this thing down tight. After we've torqued the nut on the other side to uh, 74, this one gets 66 foot pounds to jam it down tight. 66 foot pounds. All right, we've got it. Now we're gonna see if we can get this drag link uh, installed. This hooks into the bottom of the shock. This goes through the hole here in the frame right here. And then our links will hook on here and run up to here on, on both sides. But I wanna to try to get this front bolt in first. I've got two washers that fit on either side of this link and then slide in here into place. These are gonna be difficult to get in place, I think. I'm just kinda of looking through the hole and trying to line the washer and the, there, I got that first one started. Okay. So I'll take the washer and kinda of get it in place there from the inside. See if I can line it up here. There it goes. Everything's in place there. So we'll put our, uh, our nut on there just so it doesn't fall out on us. Now I can hook the shock up here. I've greased all of these bolts. Um, that will help keep the uh, Keep them from corroding, getting that white powdery corrosion that you get when you have steel bolts in aluminum. So that, that will help keep those from uh, getting corrosion on them. They go from the sleeve up here in the, down to the sleeve here. Like that. I have to move the, a, the swing arm up and down till it lines up here for me. Push it back in. There it goes. Give it a little wiggle. On this bike, all the nuts were on the, on the right side, facing to the right, on all this assembly, on the shock and everything. According to the manual, all these nuts, uh, these three nuts here, uh, 58 foot-pounds of torque. So we'll torque all these up. This little bolt here was 38 on this shock. And I'll have to do that with just a wrench, so I won't be able to get a torque wrench on that. But uh, it's not as tight as these. 58 foot-pounds. Get those torqued up and we'll have our, uh, our swing arm reinstalled. We're ready.
Okay, we've got our, uh, our center stand back on and our drag link, everything hooked back up under here. So our next step now is going to be to get our exhaust back on. And uh, this is going to be pretty simple. It's got slip joint here. This pipe goes up to the rear, the little head pipe I left on the rear cylinder. It's got a slip uh, joint with a lead uh, sleeve in it. So these are reusable. So all I need to do is slide this back up on over the little head pipe there and I clamp it down and it'll seal up. And we've got another one on the other end of it here that does the, uh, the head pipe for the front cylinder slides in here. We'll put that in last. So the first thing we'll do is get this slid up in place over the rear head pipe. The head pipe right here that's coming down off the rear cylinder. I left that in place. It's still tight. I'm going to slip this up here and see if we can get it started. I think we can. Yeah. And just slide it up on there. That's about as far as it'll go. It's got a little ledge that stops it. We've got a, uh, mo uh, a hanger right here. There's a bolt and a flange. You can see it here on this exhaust. And it goes, the bolt goes through this. I'm going to go ahead and just loosely run that in just to get that in place so I know where it's, it's at. It's where it's supposed to be. I'll just leave it loose like that. I've got my, uh, my Delkovic, little, my little oval Delkovic uh, muffler that slips over the head or the exhaust pipe here. I'm going to put some uh, exhaust sealant that came with this muffler in here to seal it up. It's just a slip joint. So there's really no gasket here. This will help seal this up. I'll slide this on. There it goes. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and put my hanger back on it. This hangs where the, the original muffler hangs right here too. So. Kind of the same thing. Looks like the muffler's about where it was. I've got the same amount of clearance I had. So that looks pretty good. Okay, we're ready to slip this front pipe on. I got a new uh, gasket. I'll put the uh, link in the description below on the, the tools that I'm using here and any parts will be down in there as well. I got these off of Amazon. I just picked a seller that had them in stock. No big deal. But, uh, this gasket will go up in the uh, exhaust port in the head here. And there's a, there's a ridge in there that it lands on. And just shove it all the way up against that. Our head pipe will start it in here in the exhaust. And then I'm going to have to pull this down a little bit and just slide it back into the exhaust pipe down here and work the uh, head right up in, uh, the pipe right up into the cylinder head there and then our flange goes on and that will be the install on the exhaust system now on these uh, flanges on the exhaust head pipes you don't want to just go nuts you can bend these flanges and then they don't hold as good. Just get them even, uh, tighten either side, and kind of watch the gap in here, and get them even, and, t and just snug them up good and snug. Just don't go crazy on them. But that'll take care of that. We'll tighten this up, and uh, every, all of our slip joints, and uh, we'll have the exhaust reinstalled. Well, folks, I appreciate you all hanging out with me and doing a little service here on the V-Strom. Uh, I wasn't real happy with the amount of grease that I found in these bearings back here. Uh, some manufacturers, uh, brand new bikes, you know, they don't have a lot of grease in the bearings. Other ones do. So I'll probably go ahead and do the steering head bearings on this V-Strom next and uh, everything will be lubricated properly. I invite you all to come back and see me. We'll go somewhere and do something else till I catch up with you again. You all take care of yourselves. We'll catch you next time.